Welcome to TikTok Sins. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on every video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you months before Rosa Parks. Claudette lived in Montgomery, Alabama, where at the time they tried to keep black people in their place. But that didn't phase Miss Claudette. She was angered by the case of Jeremiah Reeves, an older classmate at Booker T. Washington High School, who was indicted in 1952 and later executed for allegedly raping a white woman. Because of this, she went on to join the NAACP Youth Council and took to flaunting her natural hair in defiance of the pressure to have it straightened. On March 2nd of 1955, Claudette was riding the bus home from school when the driver ordered her and her classmates to vacate a row of seats to accommodate one white woman, but she refused. Like for part two. Part two on how a 15 year old black girl refused to give up her seat to a white woman. So like I said, the bus driver ordered Claudette and her classmates to vacate a row of seats to accommodate one white woman. All three of her classmates got up, but Claudette did not budge. She refused and said she knew her constitutional rights. They responded by roughly yanking her off of the bus, handcuffing her and placing her in a cell. Claudette cried and prayed until her mother and pastor came a few hours later to bail her out. Claudette caught the attention of local black leaders who helped her get legal representation that led to most of her charges getting dropped. The leaders wanted to use her as an example as justification for a citywide bus boycott, but they thought she was too young and emotional. When it was revealed that Claudette had been impregnated by an older man later that summer, it confirmed their sentiment. Like for part three. Part three on how a black 15 year old girl refused to give up her seat to a white woman. So like I said, once they found out that Claudette was pregnant by an older man, they said that she was the wrong person for the movement. The right person arrived nine months later when Rosa Parks, a 42 year old seamstress and NAACP secretary made headlines for her arrest on December 1st, prompting the launch of the Montgomery bus boycott the following day and the national rise of Dr. Martha Luther King Jr. With all that being said, Claudette sparked legal action that led to the end of Alabama's segregated bus laws and enabled a widespread civil rights movement to pick up steam. A big thanks to Miss Claudette Colvin. Story time on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister and I didn't even realize it. Okay, so boom, my mom and my dad had been together for 14 years up until this point. And my mom was actually pregnant with my soon-to-be little sister. My mom and my dad almost never argued. They had a pretty solid relationship, or so I thought. And my mom was very close to her twin sister for obvious reasons. I mean, they're twins. Well, one day when my parents was at work, I decided to skip school with my friends and go to the movie theaters instead. But I needed some money. So I was planning on going home to get money out of my mom's purse since she never noticed when I took anything. I assumed the house was empty because I was usually the first one home, then my mom, then my dad. Remember that because that's important for later on in the story. Y'all, I ran into the house and I went straight for my parents' room. I mean, I was loud. I didn't hear any moaning, y'all. Guess he was doing a bad job. But anyways, I opened that door and there it was. Like for part two. Part two on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I opened the door into the room and there it was. My dad and my mom's sister literally staring at me in shock. I closed that door so fast and ran to my room, I didn't even give him a chance to react. Y'all, I didn't even realize that wasn't my mom. Don't worry though, because I eventually did. Stick with me. But yeah, I was panicking on how I was going to explain why I skipped school and that I just walked in on them. I was waiting for them to come talk to me but they never did about four hours later my real mom came home and screamed that she got food for us now remember what i said i'm usually the first home then my mom then my dad so my mom only bought food for me and her assuming that her husband wasn't gonna be home till later so anyways i went downstairs and told my mom sorry about earlier she was confused and said what happened earlier and this is when it got real y'all life for part three Part three on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister, and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I told my mom I'm sorry about what happened earlier, and she said, what happened earlier? Y'all, my stupid ass, I really thought that was my mom's way of trying to act like nothing ever happened. So I just laughed. But then I said, where's dad's food? Then my mom said, you know he doesn't come home from work till later, so the food will spoil by then. Y'all, at that very moment, it hit me. I realized that when I opened the door for that split second, I didn't see my mom have a pregnant belly. So out of nowhere, I made that, oh my gosh, I just realized something noise. You know that noise. It goes like this. <gasps> 
So my mom still confused asking what's wrong. I said, mom, were you here earlier? She said, of course not, honey. I was at work the whole day. I screamed, oh my gosh, mom, dad is cheating on you with Lily. My mom immediately stopped eating. Like for part four. Part four on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister, and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I screamed, oh my gosh, mom, dad is cheating on you with Lily. Then my mom immediately stopped eating. My mom looked at me so serious and said, what are you talking about? And I explained everything to her. The anger my mom had is just something I can't explain. Let me remind you that my mom is pregnant, and she's finding out that her husband is cheating on her with her twin sister while pregnant, and she's finding out by her daughter. My dad was a dead man. Once he came home, his life fell apart. He cried and begged my mom not to leave him, but nope, she divorced him and took him for everything he got, might I add. My mom couldn't even look at her sister, so their relationship was never the same. And it doesn't help that my mom slept with her boyfriend a year later. My mom is pet at tea. I still get to see my dad, but I always have that scene in the back of my head. But hey, I never got in trouble for ditching school, so it all worked out. <laughs> All right, everyone, this is Ask Val. One of my followers need advice, and I need everyone to sign off in the comment section. So I'm 15 in high school, and I'm very little. Literally 5'1", and I'm what many people would consider a nerd. I keep getting bullied by a popular girl crew of five. They all make fun of me in class, lunch, and even the bus. I don't want to snitch because I feel like that will make everything worse, and one of them even got bold last week and actually pushed me. I can't fight, so I did nothing, and now I just don't know what to do. Please story time on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant. It's giving stepdaddy. It's giving betrayal. Anyways, so boom. I was 17 at the time. My boyfriend was 20 and my mom was 35. So me and my boyfriend were together for two years, but it was very rocky because he couldn't keep his third leg in his pants. I would go to my mom for advice, but she was always on his side. You know that one family member or friend you go to for advice and instead of hearing you out, they say, what did you do? Yeah, that was my mom. I would be like, hey mom, George cheated on me. Let's call him George. And she would say, well honey, what did you do to cause George to cheat on you? Like what? Anyways, one day I decided I no longer wanted to be treated like crap, so I left George, and I left George for good. But guess what? He was always still around because my mom would always invite him to dinners and movies, and that was just the beginning. Like for part two. Part two on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant. Yes, it was giving stepdaddy. So like I said, I broke up with my boyfriend because he was a serial cheater, but my mom was still inviting him over. I would tell my mom to stop, but she kept saying that he was family. I was so pissed at my mom that I literally always stayed in my room, and when he would come over, I would hear them downstairs watching movies and laughing. I thought it was weird, but I definitely didn't think they would have gotten married, let alone have my little sister. Well, two weeks after our breakup, yes, just two weeks, one night when my ex-boyfriend George was over, I all of a sudden didn't hear them downstairs watching a movie. But I did hear my mom's room door slam shut. Then I heard thumping. And that wasn't about to happen on my watch. I ran to open the door, but the door was locked, so I started knocking. My mom opened the door, and I seen her hair in shambles and my ex on her bed. Like for part three. Part three on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant. Yes, yes, stepdaddy, we get it. So like I said, I heard thumping in my mom room, so I ran and opened the door, but it was locked. So I knocked. She opened the door, and her hair was in shambles with my ex on her bed. And might I add, he was naked. I cried and said, how could you do this to me? Do you know what this lady said? She said, well, sweetie, I understand him. You guys weren't compatible. And we're getting married Sunday, so this is something you're going to have to get used to. I attacked my mom, fought her, beat her, actually. And I moved in with my dad, who was disgusted by her. I bet you guys are hoping she didn't actually marry him. Well, she did. And she ended up pregnant. I had the last laugh. Because fast forward a year later and my mom is crying in tears. And y'all wouldn't believe why. The story gets crazier. Life for part four. Part four on how my ex married my mom and got her pregnant. He graduated to stepdaddy, but not for long. So like I said, fast forward a year later, I had the last laugh because here is my mom crying her eyes out. Why, you may ask? Oh yeah, he was cheating a lot. And with younger girls. He even tried to get back with me. I laughed at my mom and said, oh, I thought you understood him, hmm? You must be doing something to make him cheat. 
Karma's a B. And my mom was pregnant with a girl, but unfortunately, she had a miscarriage. Rest in peace to my sister. That's the only part I'm actually sad about. She ended up divorcing my ex, and now she's left with nothing. No husband, two failed marriages, no relationship with your daughter. And don't feel bad for her, guys. She went for her sister's man next. But that's a whole nother story. Story time on how I caught the deacon sleeping with the altar boy in the same room as me. Okay, so boom, I have a religious family that goes to church every Sunday. My parents would always volunteer me to help around in church, so half of my life I lived at church. The deacon of the church was 48, and the altar boy, who was also my friend, was 12. Now, this story gets straight to the point. There's not really any backstory. There was nothing suspicious at all. The deacon and the altar boy barely spoke to each other. Like, literally, no one in church or anyone around the church who helped suspected anything well one day my pastor asked me to fold a hundred linens it was for a church party that was happening he set me up in one of the rooms that were barely used and told me he was going to send somebody to help 20 minutes in i got cold since i was sitting under the vent so i moved to the corner of the room the corner i moved to you barely can see me because i was covered by benches minutes after i moved the deacon and the altar boy walks into the room locks the door and starts making out and it doesn't stop there like for part two Part two on how I caught the deacon sleeping with the altar boy in the same room as me. So like I said, I was in a corner peacefully folding my linen until the deacon and the altar boy walks in. They didn't see me and they start making out. All of a sudden, pants are being taken off, booties are being grabbed, and people are being bent over. And if you're asking if they, you know, yeah, yeah, they did. And I watched the whole thing in shock. By this point, I already dropped to the floor and I was just hiding. 10 minutes, yes, 10 minutes when they were finally done, they walked out. I told my parents as soon as I got home and y'all wouldn't believe the response. They literally said that that church was filled with powerful people and they didn't want to involve themselves in it. So they told me not to tell a soul. My parents took me left and we never looked back, never went back to that church again. So this is kind of like a deep, dark family secret. But hey, now you guys know. <laughs> Story time on how I was almost kidnapped. Okay, you guys, so today's story is my own. Let's get into it. Okay, so boom. I was in the ninth grade when this happened, and my brother was in the twelfth. We always took a bus to the bus stop that was five minutes away from our house, and we walked the rest of the way home. I had super strict parents, so I didn't have a cell phone. This detail comes into play later on. So on this particular day, our routine changed. My brother had to complete some community service hours, so we were going to separate. I was going to go home, and my brother was going to go the opposite direction to the daycare that was also five minutes away from the bus stop the bus dropped us off and before my brother walked away he told me to be careful and i was like yeah yeah thinking this was going to be a regular walk home but i was definitely wrong about that about three minutes into me walking when my brother was no longer in sight a car slowly pulls up next to me and puts his window down like for part two part two on how i was almost kidnapped Okay, so I'm walking home alone and my brother is no longer in sight and the streets are kind of empty. A car slowly pulls up next to me and a guy puts his window down. A man who looks like he's in his 40s yells out, Hello, beautiful. I kept walking and ignoring him and he got louder and now he's following me in the same pace as i'm walking with his car hey what's your name that's what he yelled but he said it so loud that it scared me and i started walking even faster he drives up next to me again and leans over to the passenger seat to try to open the door and told me to get in at this point i'm jogging so he parked his car and started jogging right after me i full-blown started running and guess what he did he went back into his car and started driving to me at this point i'm 36 seconds away from my house and i don't want to go there so he knows where i live so i go to the gas station and he follows me like for part three part three on how i was almost kidnapped so like i said i started running and he got back into his car and i was 30 seconds away from my house so i didn't want him to know where i lived so i ran to the gas station and he followed me so now i'm in the gas station acting like i'm buying something and this guy literally parked his car and walks inside and comes right up to me he then says hello beautiful what's your name i don't know why i answered i just was scared so i said my name was victoria which is not it's valerie but i said victoria then he grabs my arm and says victoria you're coming home with me tonight he starts to squeeze my arm and grips it really tight y'all i was so scared i don't even know why i didn't scream i was just like in fear but i'll be damned if this man was gonna take me home he whispered in my ear to walk to the car and at that moment i screamed to the cashier like for part four part four on how i was almost kidnapped 
So like I said, he told me to walk to the car. And at that moment, I screamed to the cashier. He's squeezing my hand and he's trying to take me. All the cashier did was look up and said, what's going on? And that man ran to his car. I'm talking about bolted. He was gone. Flash. I stayed with the gas station lady for about 30 minutes after that because I was so scared to walk home. And then eventually a nurse that was also in the gas station who was waiting with me walked me home. I'm still grateful for that nurse to this day. Thankfully, that was a gas station that was close to our house and my family always went there so they knew all of us. The gas station lady told my family what happened and they got me a phone the very next day. And now my brother always walked me home first before going to go do his community service hours. It's crazy because that was the very first